Hi, I'm Heather Robertson and welcome to my studio. Today we're looking at the new Christmas collection of moulds from Katie Sue Designs and I'm going to take you through each of the moulds and then we're going to make a lovely little Christmas project uh, using our new moulds. So we have Father Christmas, Sitting Reindeer and Festive Garland. Let me take you through all of these moulds and at the end of this we'll have a completed project. Let's start off by having a look at our beautiful Father Christmas. This mould is a lovely classical Father Christmas, perfect for all your classical projects. Look at all that detail right down to his burlap sack and his little present list, his uh, naughty and nice list. And all that detail in the face there, which leaves very, very little for you to paint. All the work has been done for you. So painting this is really, really easy. Now I'll take you through the steps of molding this beautiful piece, painting it and putting it together into a project for you. So we'll start off by looking at the mold. Again, look at all that lovely detail in there. You can even see his buttons in the mold. Um, it stands about four inches tall, which is about 10 centimeters, and it's about four centimeters wide. So when you first get your mold, just give it a light dusting of corn flour. Um, you can use talcum powder if you want to use this for a craft project. Um, if you're using food products, uh, corn flour is a really good option. Um, this gets rid of all the excess moisture or any excess moisture in the mold and just helps, um, helps release your clay a little bit more easily. Um, so tap out any excess and then Take your clay. I'm using hearty soft clay. I'm using uh, white mixed with a little, I've got some pink mixed into the white here. This gives a nice base color. And just press your clay into the mold. Now, as I'm pressing it in, I'm pulling it away from the edges as well as I go. So I'm using a bit of a rocking action. I'm pressing in and pulling away from the sides. And it doesn't matter if you've got too much. Just keep pressing that in working your way up to the top of the mold and then pull that excess clay away with your thumb. Don't leave it on the side, just pop that under a glass jar or in a bag just so that you keep the moisture in the clay so it doesn't dry out when you're still using it. So just keep pressing that in. Now I have let my clay dry a little bit so it's not too sticky and this will help release it from the mold. Um, again, if you find that it's sticking to your fingers a bit, your clay might be a bit on the wet side, but a cosmetic sponge can help get your clay nice and even and stop it sticking to your fingers. You can also just press that on your work surface like that, and this will give a nice flat back to your piece. We've also got a lovely handhold all the way around the mold. So use that and you can support your piece with your thumb as well. Just get the air underneath, just give it a little flex or a little wiggle all the way round. I'm supporting it with my thumb at times because I don't want it to move too much, but I want that air to get underneath. So you can see this will just pop out the mould now. And there you have it. There's your Father Christmas. He moulded beautifully. He popped out of that mould so easily. And that's because there's not too much moisture in there and you've got the air underneath so it can fall out the mold easily. It's a high grade silicon, so it's made. We, we've made these for easy release. So again, look at all that lovely detail, ready and waiting for you to paint it. When you've molded your piece, just get some paper towel and leave it to dry on the paper towel. I like to leave a piece like this overnight it can dry quicker. Um, it just depends on how, how warm your house is or how warm the day is. Um, once the outside has dried a little bit, just turn it over and let the other side dry. But the paper towel will help absorb the moisture from underneath and the air will dry it on the outside. So mold as many of these as you like, pop them to one side, and then we'll come back and paint him. So this is the piece that we, we molded earlier. It's had a chance to dry overnight. You can see all that lovely detail there. It's got a lovely base color. Um, and so on a piece like this, I typically use acrylic paint um, because it's got a base tone and I, I want to cover up that color. Um, with a piece that's white, you could choose to use acrylic paint or you could choose to use watercolor. 
using watercolour on white, you'll get that lovely luminosity shining through because of the brightness of the, the white clay underneath. And I typically tend to use gilding waxes on a dark piece like this. So um, this was moulded with hearty soft white and black mixed together. And so you have those three different base colours. And I'll show you show you the different painting methods for each. So if I just move these two off to one side, and we'll start off by looking at using some acrylic paint. So over here, I've got a mix of, I've got red, green, blue, yellow ochre, black and white. Now we don't need to paint a flesh tone because he's already, we've used a, a pale pink tone here already. So if you're worried about painting the face, go for a pale pink color or a dark color that you would use for, for, for the skin tone and it cuts down on the painting. Um, but we're going to paint the rest of this. So I'm going to go in, I've got a jar of clean water and I've got a jar of water to clean my brush. I, I tend to keep two, two jars with me and I've also got a paper towel just to dry my brush on. I'm going to just spray a little bit of water into my acrylic paint. This is just to keep it, it's been out for a little while and I don't want it to dry up too much. You don't have to do this, but I find having a spray bottle kind of just helps keep my paint nice and wet. Um, I've got a round brush. You can use a flat brush for this as well, um, but it's, it's quite a small one. This is a size two paintbrush. And I'm just gonna carefully block in Santa's suit or Father Christmas's suit. This is his outer jacket. I'm not being too precious. I'm not worried that I'm going on to his sack a little bit, but I do want to keep this edge nice and sharp. And because of the detail in these molds, it gives you that nice edge to work from. And let's just paint that base color in there. Carefully turn it over so you're now working on the other side. Being careful to keep your fingers away from the wet area that you've painted. And we're just going to just give this a nice base, base tone. You don't have to have the paint too thick. Let the brush do the work for you. If your paint is too thick, just water it down ever so slightly. You don't want it sopping wet, but you want it to flow and move easily. There we go. That's the base of his coat already. And let's go on for the sleeves. Now I'm going to hold him carefully by his head. Let's take a little bit more water there. And in these tight areas here, I'm just using the brush just to push it in. If your brush is too big, get a smaller brush. But don't be afraid of letting the brush do the work. Fill your paint or fill your paintbrush with paint and really let that spread. It saves you having to keep dipping back into your, into your paint. Lovely, and that's drying quite nicely already. Let's take a little bit more. You're not using very much paint here. It's just a tiny, tiny amount. So I start with the deepest recess and work my way out. Now I'm not worried about this going over the belt because we're going to paint that belt with a darker tone in a little bit. And that's part one painted and ready to go. So just leave that to dry. I have put down a piece of paper on my work surface as well just to protect my work surface. You could use paper towel for this. It doesn't have to be a piece of paper. Now again, if that paintbrush is too big for you, you can get a, get a smaller one. Wet your paintbrush, take a little bit of paint, make sure that your paintbrush is nice and flexible with the paint and use the paintbrush to paint into that area. Let the brush do the work for you. This is, this is what I mean. So 
I've got a tiny bit of paintbrush on the tip of my paintbrush, a bit of paint, sorry, on the tip of my paintbrush. And I'm just pressing that into that tight spot. And just maneuver your piece until you get the angle that you want. You don't have to have your Father Christmas in the right position or when, when you're painting. Just rotate it and turn it until you get the angle that you want. Don't leave your paintbrush in your water because you'll ruin your paintbrush. Always clean it, dry it off on some paper towel before you go into your next colour. So I'm going to go in for the burlap sack now and I'm using a lovely yellow ochre colour. If this colour is too pale, just add a little spot of black to it or a little spot of blue and it will darken it up. Again, I'm just scrubbing this into all that lovely detail. And try, try to keep your edges nice and sharp. So this is where a small paintbrush can be very handy. And just be careful not to, not to smudge any area that you've painted. And then we can go in with some white and start going over. So where we've got a bit of a smudge of green there, we can actually cover that up with your white paint. If you find that you've got paint where you don't want it to go, I find using a cocktail stick just to scrape away some of that excess paint really, really helps to keep that line nice and crisp. And then you can go back in with a little bit of the main colour again just to go over where that smudge happened. So it's it's not just a simple case of whack down some colour. If it smudges, just pull some away and then neaten up that edge. You can always add more colour. There we go. Okay, we'll come to the eyes in a little bit, but let's continue with painting his presents, his gloves, his boots, and his list as well. Our Father Christmas is now starting to come to life, but he still doesn't have a face. So it's a very, very simple way of doing this. You don't have to paint too much detail. Um, one thing I will do is add his eyebrows in very quickly. His eyebrows are white, so I'm using the fine, fine paintbrush again, painting his eyebrows in. If you wanted to, you could paint the whites of the eyes as well, but because this piece is so small, I don't think that's strictly necessary. So I'm going to do his undergarment in maybe a white or a yellow there. I'll go back in there. Actually, I'll do that in this yellow ochre as well. Okay, and when, when the shoes dry, I'll finish painting that area. Okay, lovely. Right. This is where a cocktail stick and a pin or a needle come in really, really handy. So I'm going to take my cocktail stick and a little bit of black paint. Oops right on the tip of the cocktail stick and put one dot in each eye really really simple just one dot with the the, ed with the, the tip of a toothpick and I'm going to do the same thing though with white paint and my needle we're going to give our Father Christmas, a little highlight in each eye. So there's one. And two. And our Father Christmas just comes to life. Now, another thing we can do is add, take a little bit of red paint tiny bit of white paint let's just mix mix those together get a nice soft pink and 
We can add some color to his mouth. We could add some color to his nose if we wanted to. It's, it's a cold, it's a cold day. It is winter after all. And give a light rosiness to his cheeks. And there you have at least the base color for your Father Christmas. And I'll show you how we'll bring him to life in just a moment once this is dried. Um, this will dry pretty quickly. Avoid a heat gun because you don't want to um, make the, the clay bulge or, or swell up. Um, you can use a very, very light hair dryer on this to dry it, but nothing too hot. Um, so we'll just leave that for a moment to dry and then we'll come back shortly. Right, now that this has had a chance to dry, let's bring this to life by adding just a tiny little bit of gold and white to, um, to our Father Christmas. So for this, we're going to need a flat, uh, flat paintbrush. Um, anyone will, um, any kind will do, just use the one that's comfortable for you. And we're going to take a little bit of white paint on this flat brush and we're going to wipe the majority off the brush. So we want a nice dry brush. And this is, this is what I call dry brushing. And we're just going to lightly brush this over our entire piece, just lifting out all that detail. You can take a bit more. Don't use too much, we're just doing a very, very light dusting, a bit like icing sugar. This is just to lift out that detail. I always start with white. If you wanted to go over this with another color, like a pale yellow or an orange, you could do that as well. Um, but I always start with white because it gives a nice base color. And this is what I mean about the that present detail. You can get all that detail without actually having to paint it because we've done all that work for you in the mold. So you could just use a flat color and then just dry brush some white over the top. You can take a little bit more white paint. Do that over top of the list here, over his jacket. Also gives the impression of this being a little icy and chilly. And if you wanted to add a little bit more detail, you can go in with your fine paintbrush again. And I'm going to use a little bit of bright gold acrylic paint. And I'm going to paint in those gold buttons and his buckle. If you wanted to give an indication of gold anywhere else, you could just add a little hint of gold. You could do this with your finger as well. Just dry most of it off and give, give it a little, little dusting. You could also use, use your flat paintbrush again, get most of that paint off. Just give a very, very light dusting of gold. But when you're using metallics, use them very sparingly because they can actually take some of that detail away. You just want a, a slight indication of detail. And there you have your acrylic painted Santa or Father Christmas. <laughs> and I'll show you the next method with watercolor paints. So now we're going to use the watercolor paints on a piece that I've molded in white. Now. Again, I like to use round paint brushes with my watercolor paints. Um, you can also use one of these water brush pens. Um, they work really well with watercolors. First thing I like to do with my paint is just spray a little bit of water into my paint palette. This will soften all my watercolors. And I'm going to go in with a nice dark red. So this I'm using a, a water brush here. Um, you don't have to but these work really, really well. They keep your paint nice and wet. And like we did with the acrylic painting, we're just going to give this a nice coat 
of red paint. But this won't dry as fast as the acrylic paint, so don't make your watercolours too wet, otherwise they will flow a little too much, and we don't want that for this particular piece. So just do a nice coverage. And the white of the clay will make these colours glow because of the, the bright white paper behind or the clay behind. And you can see automatic or already how much faster it is to paint with watercolours than it is with acrylic because the paints flow so beautifully. So that's the red done. Now, if you are using a water brush, still make sure you clean your brush before moving on to the next colour. Um, you want to make sure all that paint is out of that brush. So you can see here, even though I'm rinsing it off, there was still some red in there. We need to make sure all that paint is out of the brush before we move on to the next colour. And you can see how it's going into all those creases and you because of the translucency of the colour, you don't really need to give it that wash of white paint over the top because it's pooling in those creases already. But you do need to be careful in these tight spots here. Use a very, very light touch and just use the tip of your paintbrush. So I'm going to go and give his sack a lovely golden brown colour. And you can see all that lovely detail from the burlap. And painting is so calming and meditative. Just lose myself for hours painting. And it's so easy with using watercolour paints. There we go. Let's put that down to dry for a moment. I'm going to go back in with a bit of blue in the presence here. Let's do that. And I think maybe I'll add, yeah, let's add a bit of pink as well. Make it go pink and purple. Pink, blue and purple. So the colours have just flown and... Uh, flowed and, and merged together. That's the joy of using watercolour. And if I want to get a nice flesh tone, I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna here. Let's just add that to my paint palette. Tiny bit of pink. Let's see what that looks like. Bit of a tanned Father Christmas. I'm adding a lot of water to that. Drying my brush off. Now you could use acrylic paint to paint the face if you wanted to. You don't need to, but just a little we're just going to give him a little bit of blush of colour. Not very much. Just painting that around the mouth and across the face and leaving the moustache and the beard. If it's, you use a nice dry brush for this, 
You don't want too much water and too much paint here. You just want to give a light indication of colour. Just a tiny, tiny hint of colour there. All right, and let's go back and paint his list. So I'm going to go back in this nice yellow. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using a water brush or a regular paintbrush for this. They both work. And I use both of them. I I don't have a preference for either one. Um, sometimes it's sometimes it's as simple as it depends on which brush I pick up at the time. Um, which brush is closest? <laughs> okay, so this has had a chance to dry now, and um, this is where I do like using a little bit of acrylic paint. Um, even when I'm using watercolours, when it comes to the eyes um, and adding a little bit of detail, I do still like to use acrylic paint. So um, I'm going to take my toothpick again, or cocktail stick, take a little bit of black paint. And again, we're going to just put one dot over there for one eye, turn him round. And in the center of his other eye, just place another dot. If you need a bit more paint, just take some more, but don't have too much paint on your toothpick. There we go. And then take your pin or needle. Take a tiny, tiny drop of white paint. And pop a little highlight in each eye. I've got the top right corner of each eye. If you wanted to add some eyebrows back in, you can just paint that in with the, the needle as well. Just the side of the needle, just give him some white eyebrows again, just to lift that area up. And I think I want to give him some gold buttons again. So I'm going to take my gold paint. You don't have to do this step. Um, but this is where I, I think a combination of the two media two mediums work really well. Give him a nice little gold button there, gold button there, and a gold buckle. And there you have your watercolour Father Christmas. Now, another little trick I like to do with this. But you need to be a little careful here because it can smudge your piece if you're not too careful. If you take a soft baby wipe or, or wet rag, make sure it's nice and clean. You can see I've got some paint transfer on here already from my hands. So this is where you need to be very careful. If you're wanting to soften some areas and just bring a little bit of extra highlight into it, you can wipe some of the watercolour away with a baby wipe or a soft damp cloth but make sure you move to a different section of every time you wipe move to a different section of the wipe because you pick up colour as you do so so and you don't want to smudge your piece um, and have colour transfer so I'm rubbing the red paint away here and again, that just gives the indication of more of a highlight. So again, I'm going to do that on the arm, but only do this very, very lightly in a, in, in a couple of places because you don't want to take all the paint off, but you want to give an indication of some highlights. So this is it's kind of like what we did with the dry brushing with the white paint, but I'm just removing some of the watercolour. And there you have your acrylic painted Father Christmas and your watercolour painted Father Christmas. So they look very similar, but the painting techniques are slightly different. Um, and it depends what you're most comfortable with. 
And lastly, we're just going to have a look at some gilding wax on a dark colored piece of clay. Really, really simple to do. Um, I've got some gold gilding wax and some silver gilding wax. I'm going to move these two out of the way. And this is probably the quickest and easiest way of decorating your Father Christmas if you're not wanting to go for colour. Take a tiny bit of gilding wax and I always wipe off excess. I'm not looking for a big dollop. I, I just want a slight smear on my finger. And make sure you protect your work surface. So whether that's with a piece of paper or paper towel, just protect your surface because this is a wax and you don't want to get that onto your lovely soft furnishings. And just rub the wax onto your piece. Get into all those tight areas and a little bit goes a very, very long way. So you can buy one tub of gilding wax and it will, I've, I've had this tub for, oh gosh, probably six, seven years. And I have given some away as well out of this tub. So this lasts a really, really long time. Definitely worth the investment if you want to get some gilding wax. And look at how very, very quickly, compared to how you've, we've had to paint with acrylic paints and watercolors, how quickly this piece comes to life. And if you do it two-tone, add a little bit of silver onto the areas that would possibly be white. You've got some extra depth and highlight there. So the, the, there you have three different ways of painting your Father Christmas. Now let's take a look at our sweet sitting reindeer. We've got two reindeer here, a large and a small one, and they measure about, the large is about uh, six by six centimeters or 60 by 60 millimeters. And the small one is about 53 by 45 millimeters in size. So these are lovely for card projects, cupcakes um, and, and small crafts, um, but can be incorporated into some larger pieces as well. Um, let's have a look at the mold. Again, you've got the lovely hand holds all the way around, which means that you you can mold these pieces easily without distorting your project. Um, because there are two pieces on here, I would recommend that you sculpt or you mold one and then you mold the other one after you've removed it. So don't do them at the same time um, because when you're releasing it from the mold, you may distort the, the second one. So do one at a time. I'm going to use some brown hearty soft clay mixed with some white and I'm just going to pop that inside a glass jar um, to stop it from drying out. As with all of our moulds, just give it a light dusting of corn flour just to get rid of any excess moisture and then start pressing your clay into the mould. And don't worry if you don't have enough because we can just add some more clay or if you've got too much, we can just pull some away from the edge like that. So let's start that one again. It's just I'm going to put a nice big piece in here. And so I'm going to slowly work my way around the mold. I'm pulling the clay in from the edges. And I'm guiding the clay all the way up the mold. working my way around. And when I come to the antlers, I know some people fi fi can find this a bit tricky. I like to smear the clay into the antlers because it's a really, really thin area. Just smear some of that away. And then with the back of a paintbrush or with a Dresden tool, this is just like a, a little curved tool. I'm using this as as basically it's a smaller finger really I'm pressing the clay and pulling it away from the edges scraping any away that I don't need take your time with this you don't have to do this quickly you don't have to rush just slowly like you're smearing butter or icing into the mold you just want to you don't want it to be too thin in in this area 
but this is how I like to work. Just pull the clay away from the edges. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of excess here and that I can just scrape away. Very easily pull that back in. Just take your time around the antlers. I like to press, always like to press my pieces onto a flat surface because this gives a nice flat back. And then we need to get the air underneath. And this is why I was saying you don't want to mold both pieces at the same time because you need somewhere to place your thumb. And you don't want to be having to be careful around both pieces. I'm just trying to get some air underneath. I'm being very careful here. Now I've got hold of the, the reindeer's body and I'm gently pulling the antlers away. And here you have your stag or your, your reindeer. And again, all that detail, all that fur detail right down to his bell and the eyes. And I'll show you different ways of, of painting him uh, when we come to the painting. So let's pop him to one side. I'm going to put him on some paper towel and we'll just leave him to dry. And let's go on to the smaller reindeer. So just keep pressing that clay into your mold. Press that against your flat surface. And again, give this mold, give your mold a little flex, a little wiggle, and carefully remove your reindeer from the mold. Now, if your clay is too soft, you'll find that your antlers really stretch and your antlers may break. So you do need to let your clay dry out a little bit. You don't want it to stick to your fingers. So if it's not sticking to your fingers, but it's still got some flex to it, that will go nice, that, that will come, come out of the molds beautifully. And you're not gonna get too much stretch in those delicate areas. Again, pop that onto some paper towel, pop that to one side, let them dry. And when those are dry, we'll come back and we'll paint those. Let's have a look at making our festive garland. This is a really, really clever mold. I love the fact that it comes in four different pieces. So you can create three different elements. So we have our main hanging garland here. Then we've got some side pieces, these hanging pieces. And we've also got an individual bow. So you can decide where you want these pieces to go and you can decide how you want them to fit. So having a look at the mold, again, you've got the main hanging garland here. And these little pieces over here is where the baubles on the left and right sides will slot into those, those gaps. So you can choose to have this as just a plain garland, or you can join several pieces together, or you can have some hanging pieces as well. And then we've got the lovely little bow in the middle so that you can join all these pieces together. Um, and add that extra little embellishment uh, to your projects. So with all of our molds again, just give it a light dusting of some corn flour to get rid of all that excess moisture and to help your, your clay release easily from the mold. So for this today, I'm going to be using some hearty soft clay. I've got white and green mixed together. This is the, the, the regular green, not the dark green. And I'm going to start just by making a bit of a sausage, just so I can see roughly how much clay I want. Now I'm going to turn this clay on its side and I'm going to start pressing the clay into the mold, making sure that I'm getting it into all those, all those leafy areas. And then I'm squeezing and pushing and rocking the clay backwards and forwards all the way up to make sure that I get a nice flat back and I'm not putting too much clay into the mold. Scrape away any excess and pull back from the edges. Now, you'll notice I've missed a small piece there. That's not a problem. Just take another little piece, press that in there, and 
I'm kind of pushing forward and pulling back. I want to make sure that that little piece gets exactly where I need it to be. I need to make sure there's enough clay in there and I want to make sure there's enough clay here as well. So it's okay to add clay. You can take clay away and you can add clay in. It's going to stick to itself as long as the clay is is wet or um, not completely dry, you can you can keep adding to it. Yeah, well, you can add wet clay to dry clay as well, but you need to use a bit of PVA glue. So I, again, I'm rocking backwards and forwards, making sure it's away from all the edges. I've got a cosmetic sponge here to make sure that it's pulling away from the edges nicely. And again, with the hand holds here, give the, it gives you somewhere to hold and give your mold flex. Let's get the air underneath. You can support it with your, your clay with your thumb as well, just to get the air underneath. And then out pops part one of your garland. Now you can leave that flat, like uh, slightly curved like that. You can accentuate the curve a little bit more if you want to, or you can straighten it out altogether. That's the joy of working with, with the hearty soft clay. You can still manipulate it a little bit before you leave it to dry. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to make sure that I do both sides. So one is left and one is right. Um, they are different um, because you've got some leaves that poke out in different directions and we want them to be mirrored. So these, these are a mirror of each other. Let's just take a bit more clay. I love using the cosmetic sponge for this because it pulls it away from the edges. and gives you a lovely flat surface on the back. And I'm just pulling away the excess clay there. It's very easy to forget which side you've done. When you turn this over and you release it, you go, oh, which side have I done? I normally start on the right, and then I know that I've got to do the left second. But it doesn't matter because if you can't remember which side you've done, Take this piece and just double check. Does that fit? Okay, I know now know I need to do this side. So pop that to one side. So there you've got your hanging piece. And this will eventually, once it's dry, fit in there. Just slots in nicely. So you can leave it to dry like that if you want to. And there's the next piece. So you can see, let me just get those out. You can see they're, they're a mirror of each other. And then when we go to place that inside the garland, you've got your right hand side. Oops, let's pop that there. And you've got your left hand side. And there's your garland. So you can have these pieces separate if you want to, or if you wanted to join these up, you could add another piece onto the side so you can have multiple a multiple swag effect. Um, but let's leave those to dry and let's go on to making the, the bow. There we go. And flex the mold. And there you have your bow. So just pop that to one side on your paper towel, leave that to dry. And then when this is all dry, um, we'll paint this and assemble it all together. We can paint the deer in much the same way that we painted our Father Christmas. So over here, I've got some white clay and I've covered that with some watercolour paint and a little bit of acrylic on the collar there. Then we've got some brown clay with a little light 
dry brushing of acrylic paint over the top just to bring out that detail. And again, we've got some dark pieces with a little bit of gilding wax. So the painting techniques are exactly the same with acrylic paint, gilding wax and watercolour for our reindeer. And then we can come over to our Christmas garlands or festive garlands. Again, it's in four different pieces or three different elements and four pieces. So we have our swags and our hanging pieces and the bows. So you could choose to have those strung together like that in one double swag, or you can assemble these as individual hanging garlands, or you can just choose to have the piece just as a piece on its own, or join two pieces together like that. So this one here has been painted with watercolour paint on white clay. This one over here has been painted with um, acrylic paint or just a light dusting of acrylic paint um, over the foliage. Um, and this one is dark clay with some gilding wax. This one over here again is, is colored clay. Um, the bows, you can decide where you want these to go. Um, you can place these on each of the corners. You could, could place one in the center like that. Um, you can also choose to, to cut these up if you wanted to. So if you just want the bow without the hanging, the hanging ribbon bits, just cut into that. And there you have a bow, just the bow on its own. If you wanted to, you could also use this bow on your reindeer and pop a little Christmas present bow onto your reindeer. So this, um, the, the festive garland is a really, really useful mold and you can use it in multiple different ways. Once you have all these pieces, you've got all your painted pieces, let's just get these all together. We need to see how we're going to use these to assemble into a finished project. So I'm going to get some examples of um, some pieces that have already been made and then we can piece one together ourselves. Now that we have our pieces painted and ready to assemble into a project, let's have a look at a couple of examples of different ways of uh, using these um, embellishments. So we can start off with our classical Father Christmas on this piece here and we're using They've used the hanging garland pieces to create the top of this bauble with the with the bow without the hanging pieces right in the center there. Um, then we've got our reindeer over here with our lovely Christmas garland with the hanging pieces hanging down, just framing those reindeer beautifully while they sit in some snow. We could have just a section of our garland on the bottom of our piece um, and we could have that with our reindeer um, over here we've got the hellebore christmas rose uh, mold just to um, soften the the top of the um the bauble here as well and we've got some snowflakes here as well all of those molded with the hearty soft clay um, and then as an example of what can be done if you're just using gilding wax and going for kind of a rustic metallic look. Um, this is one of our baubles with, we've got the hanging pieces of the garland on the top here. We've got the middle section of our garland on the bottom here, and we've just curved that just that little bit more, and our Father Christmas in the center. So this is a really simple piece, and that would look lovely on a card, or on a bauble, or on the top of a gift box even, or a gift tag. So with that in mind, I'm going to get one of these plywood, birch plywood baubles and frames. That's what I'm using for this project today. However, you don't have to use this. These may not always be available. Um, this is just wood, but you could use this on cardboard. You could use it on paper. You could use it on the top of a gift box. This is just an example of what I'm using for this project today. Um, so I've started off with, I've painted the frame, I've assembled the bauble together, and I've painted the background. So I've got a nice wintry, wintry scene there, just some sky and some snow on the ground. 
And I'm going to get some of my flower soft. And I've popped this into a little container. Um, when I'm using the white flower soft and I want to give a snow impression, um, I like to paint the background first because this can be quite translucent and you want to have that base colour there um, just to give that indication of snow. I'm going to just put some PVA glue all along the bottom here, just covering that snow. I'm being quite liberal with this. This is a, a thicker PVA, tacky PVA. And I might just drop some in a couple of places on here as well. Just where I've got some snow falling. Let's really cover this area with some glue. Lovely, I pop the lid back on. And then I'm going to take a piece of card, place this underneath my bauble, and let's just wipe away that excess glue there. And now I'm going to sprinkle on my flower soft. I'm not too worried about this going all over the place. I've got a nice piece of folded card underneath. Let's just spread that around. You don't have to use as much as, as me here. Um, I just like layering it on quite liberally. And then I'll tap off that excess. onto my piece of card and you can see how you've got that lovely layer of snow there that's all sparkly but you've got the white paint underneath which still gives it that depth if it was blue underneath you'd still see the blue underneath there take your piece of card fold it in half and pop your flower soft back into its little container and you can use that again for another project so let's just pop the lid back on Pop that to one side and there we have our base ready to go. I've got my PVA glue here. I always prefer to use PVA glue to hot glue um, because it bonds better. Um, over time, hot glue can deteriorate and then your pieces can fall apart. It doesn't seem to happen with PVA. So PVA is always my first choice. So before you stick your pieces down, play around with where you want these pieces to go. Piece them all together, just keep placing them, playing around with the arrangement until you find something that you're happy with. Um, this, this is the fun part. You've molded it, you've painted it, you've got all your pieces now ready to turn into your projects and you can make multiple projects with all these pieces that we've made. So I kind of, I'm just trying to think if I like that one, or if I like that. I might just go with clay. I like the, I like the, I like the way this looks. So I'm going to take some of my PVA, a nice liberal amount on there, place that on top. Just stick that to my frame or your card or whatever you're you're using, and. I like using a nice thick PVA because this will it'll it seems to stick better than than the light PVA, the thin PVA. And PVA dries clear, so you don't have to worry about putting too much on. If you need something that has a bit more depth to it, you can use a clear a gel, a glue gel, and sometimes this works better for deep pieces where you've got an overhang and you don't want the piece to snap off. You've got a bit of extra um, body over there. So that's holding holding that bow on nicely. And Let's stick our garland down first. Nice liberal amount of glue. Just centre that, make sure that's nice and central. So top and bottom, that's not too that's not skew. That's lovely. Might use a bow on the bottom here as well. I like to use the 
acrylic gel on pieces that hang like this. It just makes them, it seems to be a bit stronger. Clean those edges off. Let's place that in the center. I like the way that looks so far. And again, Especially on the antlers, you want to make sure that there's enough glue on these antlers to stick. You don't want these antlers breaking off. So not, put your glue in a nice squeezy bottle like this. I find this is really, really helpful. Just press and hold that down for a moment. So that sticks nicely. And to create a little bit of depth, they don't have to both be on the same level. You can bring your Father Christmas down a little bit so the reindeer looks like it's sitting a little bit behind him. And it gives a little bit more space above and um, above your Father Christmas as well, just giving a little bit more space so nothing's it's not looking too crowded. I do like putting a liberal amount of glue on my pieces. I don't want these falling off. Again, just hold that in place for a little bit. Let the glue dry. Make sure it's bonding really well. And there, very quickly pieced together, we have a Christmas bauble for your tree. Or this could be a really fancy gift tag on a, pres on a Christmas present or a wall hanging. Um, you could do this on some MDF tags. You could do this on Christmas cards, Christmas boxes. There are so many, many project ways of using these. So your reindeer don't need to sit next to each other. And over here, we've got one of the, the hanging pieces on its side, just used on the bottom. This is on a smaller piece. And, oh, this is another lovely example of how you can use the garland just on a ring. This was made by, by Karen. And so we've got the reindeer, we've got one of our fir trees in the background there, and we've got a hanging piece, a hanging piece, and then these are sections that these two pieces here are, um, are the centerpiece. So that's being curved round on either side, and then the hanging pieces have been placed on the bottom. So there's another way of using using the garland. And we've also got some Christmas cards here. So there's a Christmas card using our Christmas, our festive garland, our Father Christmas. And we've got some of our presents and some of our small domed letters. Um, we've got that mould in our store. So do pop along and have a look at what else we have in our website on our website store. And then we've got this card. So this has got a very, very cold, wintry feel to it. A bit difficult to see on camera, but it's got a lovely pale blue tint all the way around the outside of the card. Lots of icy snow and glitter. And Father Christmas this time has been painted in blue. And we've used the one of the hanging pieces of the garland to make the top of this, this tree in the background there. So multiple ways that you can use these molds. We'd love to see what you create. So please do share what you make on our social media pages. Yeah, share what you make. Ask us questions. We've, uh, we'd, we'd love to see what you do with these. Have fun and happy crafting. <laughs>